What's going on, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest will be fighting at UFC Kansas City on April 15th when she takes on Piera Rodriguez. Please today to be joined by Jillian Robertson. Jillian, nice to see you again. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm just I'm super excited to be able to perform in a couple weeks, well, next week actually, in front of a crowd, and I'm just hyped to be back down at 115 too. Yes, a lot of big things going on here for you in this fight, but I actually wanted to start today backing up to the ending of last year because you've kind of been on this like like really hot stretch right now. It's been really fun to watch you compete these last few outings here. I want to actually start with that grappling match with Rose Namajunas because you got so much attention for that win. You needed only like 65 seconds to get the submission there. What was that like going out there and getting that win against her? Because that really kind of, I feel like, opened up a lot of, you know, different avenues for you there because of how much media attention it got. Oh, yeah. Rose is probably, like, a dream matchup for me. I've loved her since I was an amateur. I'm like, she was one of the first girls I really looked up to who was in the Tough House. She was kind of like, in the Tough House, she was kind of like my jujitsu style where she was just killing it with submissions. And I really, I, I just really admired that. So, uh, to be able to share the stage with someone like that really just uh, it meant the world to me to fit and to be able to finish it like that it meant even more it's just I, I would love to share the actual stage with her go in the cage with her one day hey that could be on the horizon sooner than later i know you have obviously these plans of going to a uh, straw weight here uh we'll talk about that in a moment here just wanted to uh go back to 2022 for just one more second though uh back in september you fought and you got a big win in the flyweight division there uh that snapped uh, uh you got yourself back into the win column there you're coming off a loss there just how important was that one as well to get a win like that uh, it's just the beginning for me. I'm like, wait till you see the win streak I build up. I'm like, this is that was the first one of many. All right, so now let's talk now about this move back to straw weight here. Just talk about that decision, um, why you decided, and how's it been so far going through training camp. Obviously, weight cuts going to be a little bit harder than going down to fly weight. Just how's everything been going with that? Uh, it, it's definitely been a little bit of a struggle, you know. Uh, just changing up diet, changing up cardio. Uh, haven't been the happiest at all times, but we're making it through and uh, my weight's coming down good. It's coming off pretty easy. I'm actually around like 126 right now. So uh, one pound over the flyweight limit. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much why I decided to move down to uh, 115 is I'm a week out and I'm already on weight for flyweight. So why not try to make the cut? I'm probably going to be uh, a little bit fairer size there uh, at 125. I'm typically undersized. So uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity, see how it feels. And if I don't like it, I am completely open to going back up to 125. But uh, I just want to take this opportunity to see how 115 feels. And I was going to say, I guess, obviously, how we just opened up talking with that win over Rose. Rose, obviously, being a, a former uh, champ, obviously. I know, obviously, mixed martial arts compared to grappling. Obviously, some differences, obviously, we know there. But still, I'm sure that's going to be a lot of confidence heading into this division that you could cont con contend with all of the top contenders within the strawweight division. So I'm sure that, obviously, a win here. Is that going to be the plan long term? If you're going to get a win here, you like the way it feels to stick around then? Oh, a hundred percent. The win over Rose, I feel like for me, it's like I knew that I was going to show her that there was levels to this shit whenever we hit the ground. So I, I knew that it, it it's like that's my world and I've always been confident in that. So MMA is a completely different game. And it's like I don't want to take anything away from her being a former champ. She deserved I believe she's still like top five. So I, she deserves those spots. But uh, I feel like I've known forever, even in the flyweight division, I know my jujitsu dangerous and I have potential to take out any girl so uh, I feel like I always just hold the confidence in that all right let's talk training camp now here obviously camp is just about wrapped up uh, you're gonna be just uh, traveling putting the final touches on the weight cut and everything just how's your camp been camp's been absolutely amazing uh I feel like honestly this is one of the one of the most focused camps I've ever had and it might just be because uh, of the weight cut because I have to put that extra attention into it. So literally 24 hours a day for the last 12 weeks, this is all I've been doing. And I'm just super excited to be able to put it on the big stage. And I know the the gym is still newer, I think for your last camp, if I'm not mistaken, that was kind of your first time with Goat Shed. Just what's that transition been like just working with all the guys down there? So uh, the transition has almost went seamlessly. Uh, my head coach, Dean Thomas, who I've worked with since I was 16, he still comes down 
couple times a week to go shed and uh, works with me. So I, I still get to work with him and uh, add the uh, mind of Austin Zaidi, the head coach of go shed. And obviously all the boys and girls there that, that they just give me hard rounds constantly. And that's what I was looking for. Yeah. I saw you've been doing a lot of work with Hannah Goldie. What's that been like working with her? Uh, obviously she seems like an amazing training partner. You guys seem to really be uh, not only friends on the mat when you're training, but uh, off it as well. Oh yeah. Hannah's probably my best friend. I'm like, she uh, unfortunately lives in Orlando. I'm in Miami. So we're about like three and a half, four hours apart. But whenever we can, she's actually coming down tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, whenever we can, we're training together. We're getting work. And then obviously off the mats, uh, we're hoping to do something. Our birthdays are one day apart. So we're hoping to do something for our birthdays after the fight. <laughs> well, happy early birthday. Is it er, birthday happen already or am I, are we early with it? Is it early? Happy uh, early birthday. It's early birthday. It'll be May May seventeenth is mine, and May eighteenth is Hannah's. Ah, uh, so it'll be perfect. Then you guys get get done with the fight, have some time to relax, even uh, you know get to enjoy some food and everything while you're not cutting weight. Perfect timing then for all that. There, that'll be fun. Uh, let's talk now though about your opponent here a little bit. Just what have you seen out of her as you've been scouting her, and what are you expecting on fight night? Uh, Pierre is definitely a very calculated fighter. Uh, she definitely approaches fights very smart. Obviously, she's undefeated for a reason. But uh, she's never really faced a grappler like me, uh, just heavy top pressure, somebody who's really looking for the takedown. And um, yeah, I think it's just going to be a different world once I get it, my hands on her. She, she doesn't know what she's getting into. All right. So one of the things in my position that I'm able to do is I'm able to ask, there's every once in a while, there's like these generic questions that always work. And usually whenever a fighter fights for the first time in 2023 or whatever year it is, I would say, you know, what are your goals for the year? Well, for you, I know you had said, right, you, you're testing this straw weight thing out. If you don't like it, you move back up. So kind of the year could be a little bit of a question mark for you in some regards, but are there any goals that you have for this year that you definitely 100% want to accomplish, whether it is at straw weight or moving back up? If I do feel good at straw weight, I am calling out someone either top 15 or top 10, no matter what, after this fight, I'm going to be looking at the names fight week, see who's matched up already, see, you know, who would be a good match for me. And I'm going to have a name in my head going into that fight of who's next. So, uh, yeah, it just depends on how I feel at 115. If I do feel uh, that that is the ideal uh, plan, though, is I want to stay at 115 and I want to be able to call out a top 15 or get myself ranked. Maybe like top 10, top five, and title shots after that. <laughs> All right. A lot of good stuff on the horizon there. Uh, quickly before we head out, I just want to get your thoughts on a few different uh, hot topics around the uh, MMA world right now. Uh, I want to ask, being that you are a, a former flyweight, but there are the possibility of maybe returning there one day. Obviously, the title just changed hands there. Uh, with Alexa Grasso beating Valentina Shevchenko. Just wanted to get your thoughts uh, on that matchup, on how she, uh, Alexa was able to go out there and get that win. And then also, uh, I know they haven't announced if there's going to be a rematch or not. You would think there probably will be, just how you think that kind of goes down as well. Uh, with Alexa taking the belt, um, like, absolutely phenomenal job by her. She just, she saw the moment and she capitalized it. And I feel like you can't take anything away from Valentina either, though, because I think, she was winning that fight until that moment, but Alexa has no quit in her and she believes in herself more than anything else. And I feel like that's the most important thing because it's like going out there, everybody thought Alexa was losing, but her, you know, she was the only one who, no matter what she knew in her head that there was no quit. She would fight until the very end and obviously was able to, I think it, it almost mentally broke Valentina a little bit. And that's why she started making stupid moves, like a spinning back kick when uh, she's right up against the cage. So it's like, Alexa's mindset in general was just inspiring. All right, now let's go to the main event for this upcoming weekend here with uh, Israel Adesanya looking to get his title back against Alex Perea. Big matchup there. We know Alex now has a few wins over him in both kickboxing now and mixed martial arts as well. Uh, just your thoughts on that matchup as well. I hate to say it, but I think Izzy's losing again. I'm like, uh, I just don't see him being able to, I, I feel like, Alex is like his like evil villain, his counterpart. And I just don't see him being able to pull it off. He definitely had some closer moments in their first fight together. But um, yeah, I think Alex is too much of a powerhouse. And UFC 287 is in Miami. Are you going to be in attendance for the fights or no? Unfortunately, no, I will not. Because uh, this is my first week. We're on a little bit of a calorie deficit. So by the end of the week, I'm probably not going to be feeling 100% and all smile. So just going to stay home, relax that one. I'm just mad they couldn't put me on the card. <laughs> all 
I know being hangry is a real thing. I know you're going to be feeling that a lot. I'm going to actually ask you a food question if you don't mind, though. I know you're going to Kansas City. Everybody says Kansas City has fantastic barbecue. I don't know if you like barbecue or not, but do you plan on partaking after the fight? Oh, yeah. I was actually already Googling, like, what food in Kansas City. So 100% going to have some good barbecue after the fight. I love barbecue. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to be in Kansas City and to be in front of a crowd to have that energy in the arena. All right, Jillian, appreciate the time as always. Uh, last thing before you head out for the day, uh, you want to go ahead and plug your social media uh, so people know where to follow you at. You have any management sponsorships that you got to plug? Also, I know you're a big time dog mom. We talked about that the last time. So if you want to give a shout out to the pup as well, feel free. Of course, shout out to Robin, Rob the dog. He's uh, well, Rob the dog 772 on Instagram. He's the best. Um, of course, my gym goat shed. If you want to follow them too, there's a lot of interesting content always. Probably the best MMA gym social media page you'll ever find on Instagram. Uh, my head coach Dean Thomas always looking out for me, and uh, just watch me or my social media too. Uh, Savage underscore UFC on Twitter and Instagram, and then watch me get my hand raised on April fifteenth.